Meanwhile, the tax plan cometh this afternoon. President Trump will deliver a speech today addressing the tax overhaul plan. This coming as Republican lawmakers are working to reach an agreement on a final tax reform plan by next week. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, not just to fix the broken tax code, not just to jumpstart the economy, but to truly restore hope, confidence, and opportunity in America. That's why we're here. That's what this is about. Tax reform is what people need right now, and I am so thrilled that we are so, so close to the finish line. We're going to keep at it so we can deliver real tax relief before Christmas. Joining me right now from Washington is White House Director of Legislative Affairs, Mark Short. Mark, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Maria. Thanks for having me on. What should we hear or expect to hear from the president later today? Can you give us any color in terms of those last sticking points that, that the Senate and House are working through? Well, Maria, I think you're going to hear the president make the case that this is historic tax uh, reform, that this is, is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, as Speaker Ryan just said, that uh, we also hope to have this bill on the president's desk before Christmas. And we think that uh, where they are in negotiations, they worked late last night between the House and the Senate, and we hope that uh, even before the end of today, we'll have an announcement to make on a final deal. And there's some debate this morning about taking the top corp uh, the top rate on individuals from 39.6 to 37 percent. Do you feel there's there's agreement on that? Well, Maria, I don't want to get ahead of where the negotiators are, but certainly that has been a conversation, as you've talked about on the show. Even I think you talked to me about your fireman friend on uh, one of your previous shows about the fact that when you remove a lot of the state and local deductions, uh, that there are some in the upper income bracket who take advantage of those deductions, and we don't want any income bracket to be harmed. So that is a conversation that they've been having over the last couple of days. That's exactly right. And then there's the corporate rate. Everybody agrees that the corporate rate should come down, but the, the, the discussion now is around 21%. Can you confirm that that is a number that, that, that's being talked about? Well, Maria, from the beginning, we've, we've argued that uh, corporate rate should be at 20 percent. Uh, but uh, if it's 20 or if it's 21, what you'll see is a historic cut, roughly uh, 40 percent from the 35 percent that we have today. So, uh, so that, we view, would be an historic accomplishment and a great achievement either way. Mark, I, I recognize that they're still sort of making the sausage, if you will. But, but when you look at this uh, op-ed that was in the journal the other day, actually, this was a news story, not in the op-ed, uh, by Richard Rubin in the, in the journal. He says the possible marginal tax rate of more than 100 percent results from the combination of tax policies designed to provide benefits to businesses and families but deny them to the richest people. So as income climbs and those breaks phase out, each dollar of income faces regular tax rates and a hidden marginal rate on top of that, creating a 100 percent tax. Is that still in this bill, Mark? No, it's, it's an incredibly misleading story, and Rubin, of course, has been attacking the tax reform effort from the very start. What they're talking about is, is a marginal dollar above the top rate. That percent may get taxed higher, but that's being rectified in this, in this, uh, in this solution that's coming through out of conference. But um, the bottom line is that every income bracket will receive tax relief. Every single income bracket will receive significant tax relief, especially those targeted toward middle and low-income families. Yeah, I know, but I mean, when you look at this story about the 100% rate, it reminds me of that bubble rate that the Wall Street Journal uncovered and as so, well. Remember well, that one? 45.6% yeah, and... rate on income of 1.2 to 1.6 million. Can you confirm yeah. that? That's out of this bill. Yes, yes, it is out. Mm. Okay. As we said when we were on the show before, that that bubble rate was going to get fixed and it has been fixed. Yeah. Republicans working on, you know, reconcile these two bills. Do you think the GOP, they're narrowing differences? Tell us what you think yeah. remains in terms of the sticking points, Mark. I think that uh, the very sticking points between the House and Senate were how you, how you handled salt districts, which I think uh, you've covered extensively on your show and, and perhaps allowing a more uh, liberal allowance there so it goes beyond property, including also state and local taxes as part of that deduction. I think there's been the, the debate between the top income rate, rate for individuals versus corporate, uh, as you've already covered. But the bottom line is that both plans were what we supported from the White House. It, it accomplished simplifying the tax code, providing tax relief for middle income families, and significantly changing the corporate rates to bring jobs back. Both plans do that. So the reconciliation is not that difficult. You're arguing over small details at this point. So you think you'll post the plan this week and maybe get a vote next week? How do you see the next uh, week and a half yeah. uh, looking? The expectation is exactly that, that conferees will hopefully sign a report, um, hopefully tomorrow. 
that uh, legislation will be finalized and final text done over the weekend and that we'll have votes on the House and Senate floor early next week. Mark, explain the pass-through rate. I'm really excited to see small business getting a break here. We know that small business is the job creators in this country. That's going to move the needle on jobs. So tell us what you feel this plan does for small business and so-called pass-through businesses, which what, are the majority in America? They are. They are, the, in many cases, the job creators, and it's, and it's why and the National Federation of Independent Businesses and small business associations across the country have endorsed this plan. And, Maria, frankly, it's also one of the cases you've made on your show as well. One of the ways that you, you, um, you, you help fix the delta between the way the C-Corps and pastors were treated is on the top rate. And so I think that was one of the considerations the conferees were making this week as well. Uh, do you think it goes any lower than 37 percent? No, I don't, I don't think you'll see that, Maria. All right, Mark. Good to see you. Thanks very much. I know you've been working hard on this. And, hey, thanks for coming out in the cold this morning. I know it's hey, cold out there. It's balmy here in Washington. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Mark, good to see you. Mark Short.